Hi, I'm Juliet Richards and today I'm going to be teaching you about the glycemic index or GI for short. So the glycemic index basically refers to how quickly and to what extent a specific food is broken down and raises your blood sugar levels. So a food that has a high glycemic index is things like white bread, anything made from flour really, um, sugar and sweetened beverages. So when you eat these foods or drink these foods, it'll go down your esophagus and into your stomach. So your stomach is a processing machine. So your, your stomach will process the food that you eat and it will break it down into small molecules. And that when these molecules are small enough, then they're able to pass across the gut wall and get into your blood. So foods like white bread, things that have been highly processed, these foods have been processed by the manufacturer. So your stomach actually doesn't need to do any work. So you get almost like a, a dump of sugar into your blood because it's all readily available and it can pass the gut wall and get into your blood. So we see these spikes in your blood sugar levels. Now, your body doesn't like blood sugar levels to be high. So it will do everything it can to prevent these spikes. And really, it's the spikes in your blood sugars after a meal that carries the greatest risk, particularly when it comes to things like cardiovascular disease, because it creates a state of oxidative stress in the body. So your body will try and um, do something with those excess, blood sh excess sugar molecules in your blood. Because, you know, we'll burn up some of it, but there's going to be excess. So first of all, we'll look to the liver. So remember, the liver is like a backup battery. So you can hold on to these sugar molecules. So once the liver is full, we'll look to muscles uh, because we can store glucose as glycogen in the, in the muscles as well. But when these are all full, then that's when it spills over and we store it as fat. And we can store it as fat around the belly Otherwise, the liver will actually start to process some of these sugar molecules into fat. So this can contribute to high blood fats, but we can also start to see fatty buildup around, in and around the liver and also around other organs. And of course, this can be a problem and this can contribute or lead to fatty liver disease and it will also contribute to insulin resistance and potentially type two diabetes. So when your body tries to do something with those high blood sugars and you've already absorbed all of the food or the sugar from your meal, so there's nothing left in your stomach, then we get this plummet in your blood sugar levels. And because of these, you get these lows, you start to feel hungry and then you start to get cravings. And if you eat food again, which has a high glycemic index, you start going on this roller coaster. And of course, this is not helpful for when you're trying to lose weight. So it ends up um, leading to weight gain and it can potentially end up leading to things like fatty liver and type two diabetes. So when we look at low glycemic index foods, so these are typically foods that haven't been processed. So things like whole foods, I say dark, dense and grainy bread. So if you can actually see the grains in there, all your beans and legumes and things like that. So these foods, because they are naturally high in fiber. So if you think of fiber like the lattice structure that holds the food together. So when you eat these foods, this will go down into your stomach and your stomach has to do all the processing. So it takes a lot longer to break these foods down. And subsequently, we see more of a drip feed of sugar into your blood. So you get this more stable, steady, slow release of sugar into your blood. So we avoid these dangerous spikes and we also avoid these lows. So this can be really helpful for blood sugar control, but also for weight loss or weight management and appetite regulation, because you're not gonna be getting those cravings and it's gonna get you over um, to your next meal. So foods that have a low glycemic index include
whole grains. So that is things like quinoa, rolled oats, brown rice, bread, but bread is a funny one because most bread has been processed to some degree and most breads are made out of some sort of flour. But what's put back into the bread, and I say if it's dark, dense and grainy, it's probably the best choice. If you're looking um, at the labels, and it's great now that we have things uh, like low GI on the packaging so you can actually tell, but don't be fooled because white bread that's low GI, I hate to think what they've done to that because they've removed all of the fiber and yeah, I, I'm not quite sure how they make that low GI, but I, I'd be careful um, going for things like that. So if you can see the whole grain, then this is going to contain the fiber and it's going to naturally have a low glycemic index. Pasta is another funny one because it is made out of flour. Traditional pasta, because of the way that it's made, it's folded over and um, really condensed, so pasta is more dense. It actually takes more processing in our stomach to break it down and it, it does actually have a lower glycemic index. However, if you're just buying pasta off the shelf, a lot of them are manufactured and they may not have um, quite as low a GI as uh, normal or traditional pasta. And the way that we process these foods or these grains also matter. So, for example, pasta again, if we think of pasta, if you cook it so it's al dente, so it's still a little bit firm, that's going to have a lower glycemic index than if you overcooked it and it was a bit stodgy and, um, I mean, you can tell that it's going to be easier to break down because it's softer. So how we cook and process the food will also change how quickly it will be broken down and that means how quickly it will be absorbed into our blood. So then we've got... Beans and legumes. So that's like your chickpeas, your lentils, your pinto beans. And these are really, really good. They have naturally a very low glycemic index and they are very high in fiber. The other thing that helps with um, the low glycemic index is that they tend to be higher in protein as well. So protein can actually affect your blood sugar levels in that if you have excess protein, that can be converted to sugar. Uh, but generally, it has a very small effect on your blood sugar levels, but it will slow down your digestion. So when you're eating foods that are high in protein, because it slows down digestion, it means that you get a slower release of glucose into your blood. So next one is... Vegetables. So vegetables, again, particularly in that whole form, will naturally have a low glycemic index because well, a lot of vegetables have, are low in carbohydrates anyway, but they are also high in fiber. So the fiber, again, will slow down the absorption and your, your stomach is going to have to do all the processing. So they tend to naturally have a low glycemic index. If we talk about, I guess, the more starchy vegetables like potatoes, potatoes are another interesting one. So potatoes do have a slightly high, well, higher glycemic index. And I mean, really, when you cook it, they do sort of break apart quite easily. And things like mashed potato, of course, that's readily going to be broken down and absorbed into your blood. But when you cook potatoes and then let them cool, you actually change the type of fiber um, to what we call resistant starch. So this is harder for us to break down and it can actually lower the glycemic index by somewhere between 30 to 40%. So 
again, the way that we process foods is going to make a difference. And this actually happens with rice as well. So when you cook and then cool the rice, it changes the fibre in it and it, it does take a, a bit more effort for us to break it down, which will lower the glycemic index. And then we've got fruit. So fruit also has a nat or naturally has a low glycemic index. So fruit again uh, contains a lot of fibre, but a lot of fruits also contain acid, and acid will also slow digestion down. And if we're thinking about fruit again. If you think of a underripe banana, this is going to have a lower glycemic index than a ripe banana because if you think about it, it's quite firm and when you eat it, you can't, it's not as sweet. Whereas a ripe banana is quite mushy and you can already taste the sugar, so it's already breaking down. So the type of fruit and you know, how ripe it is will also change the glycemic index and how quickly you'll absorb those sugars. Then we've got dairy. So dairy is made up of galactose and glucose, two different sugar molecules, and it naturally has a lower glycemic index because it's metabolized a little bit differently in our body. But dairy is also high in protein and I guess fat, depending on whether you're having full fat or light. Uh, so yeah, most dairy, all dairy will have naturally a lower glycemic index. So we've talked about the glycemic index, but we need to also consider the amount that we're eating, which is referred to as the glycemic load. So even if you're having food that has a low glycemic index, if you're eating a large amount of it, your body's still going to have to process that and do something with it. So if your body is struggling to manage those sugars and there's more and more coming in, then eventually your blood sugar levels may rise. And of course, that can also contribute to weight gain if there's extra calories on board in general. So what exactly is a low GI? Like how do we measure that? So, Low GI foods uh, have a GI less than 55. Moderate GI foods are between 55 and 71. And high GI foods are greater than 71. I think that's about right. So you can look up, there are plenty of apps, but you can also Google it. So if you want to, look more at specific foods to see what their glycemic index is just to experiment, then go ahead, I encourage you to do that. But at the end of the day, if you're wanting to eat foods that have a low GI and you don't want to be looking up the GI for each individual food, then ideally you want to be trying to eat more whole foods and plant-based foods. So these are foods that are naturally high in fiber, and have been minimally processed. And that means that your stomach and your own body is going to have to do the processing, which means that you'll get that nice low GI profile. So I hope this has been helpful. And if you like it, make sure you like it below, share it with your friends and family, and also sign up to my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos.